I, okay. I like to always start with the the good opener. Well, how did you get into voice acting? It's a good place to start. Oh, right. Yeah, let's do that. Um, so I, when I lived in Australia and I was very young, um, young, I think I was like 16 or 17, I was in children's theater playing certain characters that were very well known TV characters, but they'd always been voiced in the UK. Um, and Australia got a contract to do their own version. And out of the blue, I got a phone call from my company that hired me and be like, Hey, can you come in tomorrow and do the voice of Angelina Ballerina? And, um, I, that is like my favorite animation character from when I was little. And so I was just the happiest little clam ever went in, did her, and then got a call to do Jakers the pig. I was like, yeah, sure. I'll totally come in. And then they sent me a VHS. That's how long ago we're talking about kids. Um, <laughs> and it was, I was like, yeah, sure. I'll just work on my computer, do my homework and listen to it in the background. And I like did a double take at the TV cause it was a boy irish pig and i was like uh, what i've never done an accent but none, none of that so i became jakers the happiest little boy pig in the whole world um i love to dance do you like to dance um and went in and did it and then i moved to america having had these two animation characters kind of under my belt by accident and so I moved to LA in 2005 with the goal of using entertainment to spread positive messages for children. And of course, one of the first steps if you want to be in entertainment is to get an agent and all that good stuff. And it was pretty smooth to get an agent when you've had two animation characters like leads on TV already. So I was very grateful that Ilko, my agent, took me on and then he was the one that advocated for me in a really cool way if you want to hear the story at some point um with final fantasy where um got me through the door on that and then things just sort of took off from there yeah i mean you started at a really young age like i see a lot of people doing voiceover like starting in like their late 20s or but yeah you got your foot in the door pretty mm. early i did and i think in a way for voiceovers it's really helpful to have done it from an early age like anything but in particular I think there's an element to voice acting that really requires you to be silly and be willing to be ridiculous because you're in oh, usually yeah. like a black box by yourself being ridiculous and adults tend to be like yeah I don't do ridiculous like I'm too cool for that <laughs> I mean all their fears and all their stuff comes up and they're like sorry you want me to be a butterfly who's got like a complex about itchiness like sorry i what um where i would be like oh yeah cool okay i'll be back um because i never had to grow up because <laughs> i started so young oh i see so so naturally sydney was easy to channel because you you kind of had the energy from that into her oh uh, well that's the i mean what's so funny about sydney is she couldn't be more different to any of the other characters I've ever played, ever thought about playing, any of the thoughts I've ever had in my head. Like when we were recording and we moved so fast, like I'd get sent 1,500 lines an hour before. So it's not like I've gone through and worked out my motivation for every line. Um, and I literally would like read the line for the first time and then have to say it. And I remember saying to Andreas and whomever else was in the room recording, they were over in Sweden, but on the, on the, um, inner commie thing. And, um, I said to him, I was like, I've literally never thought those words in my entire life. They're so mean and horrible. <laughs> um, and you just made me say it. Um, so I think there was a part of it. I, I joked with them. I was like, I feel like playing Sydney is some sort of weird immersion therapy because I'm so upbeat usually that there must be like, everybody has their yin and yang, you know, everyone has that other side that once in a while, you just want to get really pissed at people. <laughs> and it was kind of like, here, we're going to spend two hours letting you release all your energy towards all the angriness and all the like, go. I'll be like, oh my God, I'd get out of there and be like, whoo, I feel good. <laughs> that must have been very healing. Yeah, it kind of was. I was like, I did not know I was this angry. Good to know. 
how did you go about actually getting the role for Sydney? Did they have an audition that you went in for, or how did that come about? No. It's a very funny story. I'm going to bring up a whole lot of it. This is could sound like major, like payday two name dropping, but there's no way to tell this story without all of that to make it as real as it was. Almir and I were chilling out in Bo's office. Like whenever Bo wasn't in um, LA, his office was kind of like up for grabs to do meetings in or whatever. And at this point I had been working with Starbreeze they the connection all happened because a friend of mine said hey you know about voice acting there's this swedish company that needs someone to help them with um releasing walking the walking dead and the vr experience and you're really good at events and things why don't you help them so i took my first ever kind of like corporate deed I mean, you can't really call Starbreeze corporate but like you know what i mean an office at least mm -hmm. um job um, and I went in and started helping them and out, I just got on so well with everybody. I just loved them so much. And one day Almir realized I was Vanille from Final Fantasy and just kind of fanboyed for a little bit. <laughs> and then like everyone in the office found it, like one of them found out that I was, uh, Ensign Reina Temple in Star Wars and he got super awkward and then like slacked me and was like, I'm married to you in the game. And like that kind of stuff. And Bo found out and thought it was hilarious. And then, so one day when Almir and I were sort of working on something in Bo's office, he was like, hey, would you like to be a voice in Payday 2? I was like, yeah, of course I would. And we sort of had this moment. He was like, can you swear? Because I'm so like not like that, right? And he was like, I don't know if you could actually do the words. Like, could you? And I was like, I'm fucking Australian. Are you kidding? <laughs> I just, I think it, I just don't say it because I'm a lady. Um, and so we had a good laugh. We played with the name. We were like, originally she was going to be called Adelaide. And we we're like, mm, it doesn't really sound very high story. Like Adelaide. Um, you know, we just played around with it and he was like, totally, we're going to do this. And so we sort of started the steps of um, building her storyline I, what was so neat is I got to have like a lot of input, you know, when we were talking about where is she from, originally she was going to be from Collingwood maybe because that's a pretty like white collar part of Melbourne. And then we were like, no, Frankston, that's like as white collar as it comes. Um, but she's still a Collingwood fan, which for anyone that is Australian knows what that means. <clears throat> it's kind of like being a Phillies fan here, anything Philadelphia, you're the like angry van um collingwood they're pretty well known for being a little bit less than gentlemanly um so we sort of built the character um with my knowledge of australia the irony being of course that she's from melbourne called sydney um and all that stuff okay okay did they uh did they just approach you with a photo of her like what was the i guess what was the idea for her personality? <laughs> well, <clears throat> yes you so um it's funny you should ask that so um this is a sticking point for me that i've never really i mean look i'm not very um sensitive when it comes to appearance stuff really compared to a lot of people that live in the town i live in but um, we did do it on my facial capture. So I had to do my face, essentially, like lots of different photos and lots of different angles and all that sort of stuff, and then sent them off and they built her face off my face. And I look at her and I'm like, is that really what I look like? <laughs> I, I didn't know I looked like that. I'm really hoping they did that. And then we're like, actually, no, we're going to just change it a little bit. <laughs> Um, because <clears throat> as far as I know, I don't look like Sydney, but that's okay. Maybe I do. And I don't, as I like to say, I can't smell myself. Um, but, uh, the blue mohawk, all of that was part, of, originally it was going to be a red mohawk. We changed it to blue. So I was definitely in the conversations about all of that. Um, 
and um, what a little sort of funny side story um, during all of that. So for some people listening, maybe they know this, maybe you do, I don't know, but I am um, a very public face of alopecia areata, which is an autoimmune condition where you're some people completely lose their hair and some people their hair comes and goes. Now, during my time with Starbreeze, I was wearing wigs and it was like my hair was coming and going, different things, different lengths, all that sort of stuff. And some of the team at Starbreeze knew this and some of them obviously, like certainly the people in Sweden weren't like up on the news that George's hair isn't actually kind of stuff. And... um what happened apparently they were planning to do you know how sometimes they've done these live action payday stuff Mm -hmm. um they -hmm. wanted to do one for sydney and there was apparently some very heated meeting that went on where they were like i know georgia should play sydney do you think she would shave her head um to do the mohawk because she's got long hair so we could convince her to and my ava got really mad at everyone she's, like, she's not shaving her head she has a condition where like and she's like you cannot make her do that she's just got her hair back like all that kind of stuff and it was very funny to know this entire thing had gone on behind everybody like no one actually called me and goes how do you feel about it and i like i've had mohawks literally physically in the past so i kind of was like dude of course i can like of all the people that are willing to shave their head i've done it many 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 times would be happy to but we actually didn't end up doing the live action there was some sort of issue i can't remember what it was there was always a bit of an issue there's always something um in that office that was always colorful um something happened and literally like the day of they pulled the project but um yeah i am very much in in involved part of integral to the actual physicality of her now i do want to say i do not have guns like she does um she has exceptional arm muscle definition Um, (laughs) all those tattoos uh, yeah and i don't i've got one tattoo and none of you will ever see it no offense um i'm certainly not the physical you know creation of it but when we did um payday con in australia I did dress up somewhat similar with a long blue wig um, just for fun. Um, and I've done that a couple of times. Okay. So, yeah, you've you've had fun embracing the character, obviously. The, in terms of the personality, the, did you guys just sit down and have a long talk about that? Or like the, the anarchist and rebellious side of Sydney? Yes, absolutely, we did. Um, There was a lot of conversation around, I mean, very different circumstances, but she left Australia because she didn't feel understood and she wanted to take on the world and wanted to prove that she could do more than any man could do kind of stuff. And although she went about it being like, I'm going to rob banks and destroy the world, I was like, I'm going to spread happiness and joy and make children love themselves. But it was a similar, honestly, like not meant to be in Australia I need to go off and do my own thing and prove that I'm all of these things so we just sort of took what is true of for me about moving to America and wanting to I've always been I grew up with brothers and in a very like male dominated world I've never really seen the like well men do this and women do this I'm like how about I do it all better than you that's yeah how about we do that um regardless of what you are and what's in your pants um so for me though it was a completely different like mindset it was a very similar um inspiration i guess and intention so yeah we we talked a lot about that i think the um the fun of getting to be that upstart female that proves to the men that she's actually better and they have to like admit it is very rewarding for me. <laughs> yeah, you get to be the face that you know a lot of women can look up to. Yeah, and it is it's really neat. You know, a lot of the payday two fans kind of say that. Um, there's a lot of females that reach out and are like, I just loved Sydney because she just doesn't care and she's so you know, 
stick it to the man, literally kind of thing. Um, and similarly, a lot of men are like, I find that super hot, um, which I find funny. I'm like, good to know. <laughs> yeah, just her as a character feels very different from Vanille. Like, it, it's just such a broad difference. <laughs> You can say that again. Um, I don't know if there's two more characters online that are more different. Um, I mean, well, there's one dif one similarity in it, and that's been the case for pretty much all the characters I've ever played, which is interesting, is that all of these characters have always had a secret, you know? They've always had a thing that, um, or, or not a secret, but like a dark past or something that they're trying to compensate for or... Mm -hmm. um, heal in a sort of funny way. Um, you know, Vanille wants to go out in the world and spread rainbows, lollipops and sunshine and make everything better because she's actually the one responsible for all the problems. Um, and her mistakes have caused all the pain. Um, and Sydney has got all this pain and anger that she's carrying while she's trying to destroy the world to show the world that she doesn't care kind of thing. So that's about the only similarity. Um, everything else, even like vocal placement, body, like as I'm recording, right, Vanille has such a light, fluffy, top heavy feel. And Sydney is so like in your boots, rough down, like, you know, very yeah, was, was that uh, daunting soul. To switch that up, going from sweet and silly to just like, oh, I hate you, like, you know, just. <laughs> Um, well, that's the fun of it. I think daunting is, no, it's, it's like a wonderful, like, oh, this is amazing. Um, in a couple of streams that I've done in the past, like we played with the idea of me literally being Vanille and Sydney at the same time. That's a pretty hard switch to do in the same <laughs> moment, but it's also very funny. Um, but at the same time, I think like when you're in the Sydney mode, I remember one of the recording sessions, I was all dressed up in like a fancy dress and high heels, walked in, took off the high heels and remember feeling like this is a weird outfit to be Sydney in. Um, but once you sort of take the high heels off and put your feet in the ground, I think um, you just get into it, you know, and yes, naturally, I'm a lot more, <laughs> I just got to believe in magic and happiness and everything will be okay. Um, that's definitely more me than like, you'll fucking suck. Um, <laughs> not really something I do on a regular basis at all, ever. Um, but it's, like I said, it was almost therapeutic to be like, yes, we all, we all have both sides. It's just what we choose to channel. Yeah, I, I was going to say, like, it it doesn't fit with your real world personality because I know you're very giving and you do so much for kids and all of your swimming stuff. Like, it's, it's just, it's great. Well, thank you. That's the stuff that really lights me up. And, you know, it was a big conversation early on of, like, can I do this character? Will it be a problem, you know? Because I'm ironically anti-violence I have like a two-year degree slash certificate whatever you want to call it from the anti-violence the non-violence communication um center in New York like this is something that I try and live body mind and soul I'm a vipassana meditator where one of the core um, messages is no harm to any living being I even have a himsa written on my wall at home which is to do no harm so like this is a very core thing of me is like no violence I'm no guns like we can have a discussion about that another time I understand their extenuating circumstances however for me as a like what works for me and so to play Sydney was a moment of like is this okay to do it and what was so special for me is that in connecting with all these fans who resonate with Payday 2, right, and embrace the FPS as a way to, like, channel and get out energy and enjoy life, was I was able to connect with human beings with my positive energy, with 
all of that and it worked because nothing is black and white like just because I personally don't want to have a gun it doesn't mean I can't connect and talk about positivity to someone who's finding that an outlet for some of their sadness like I have other outlets for my sadness and it was just really interesting to see a lot of the fans kind of just connect and me be able to be like I'm going to still spread my positive messages with you even though perhaps you present as somebody I may not have a lot in common with but that's not how life works there are so many things we could have in common just because the bigger issues are the things that come up well I don't want to say bigger issues but like the issues that are prominent that are buzzworthy that people talk about those things we disagree on but life values maybe we actually have the same values you're just expressing them differently and it was so nice to see that in these fans and and really make friends and and make you know just peep connections with people that on the surface you might be like you two won't have much to talk about yeah like i'm sure it was a really interesting challenge for you to go to a subject that you're not like super familiar with but still spread that positivity and joy that you did with those other things like i'm sure it was a really cool experience yeah yeah, it was really rewarding. It really helped me also just continue to expand my idea of what a human is because I think we can get really good at deciding that this group is like this and this group is like this. And my experience doing voices and working with Starberries has made me love the video game community in a way that I, I didn't grow up with it. I didn't have that experience. And folks who really embrace the online video game community, the, um, you know, multiplayer kind of online stuff are now some of my favorite people because I've really come to appreciate how people communicate differently, have different needs as far as connection. And I've never met a group of more giving, uh, gracious, like passionate folks. And it's so lovely. Yeah, I can definitely see that. And you just, you love having that perspective of going out and seeing the world, meeting different communities, different types of people, just to see how you can put yourself in their shoes and just make them happy. I think that's really admirable. Because when I go to places, I want to start projects and organizations I've got. Two in Africa, one in India, and one very big one here in LA that takes up an inordinate amount of my time um, in LA. We're shifting that up. But um, yes, that is my favorite thing to go to a place and sort of literally say, what is it that you need that you don't have and how can we get it? It's very, like I said, it's dangerous. If you put me in a place, I'm like, let's, let's do this. And then I'm like, oh no, now I have to do that. That's a big <laughs> thing. what would you say is like some of the most memorable moments you've had with payday fans or going to E3 or conventions or anything like that? Yeah. That my most memorable, I mean, both of the payday cons were pretty incredible. Um, payday con Australia, I think, and that experience would have to be my favorite by so far because um the the fans like being australian it was sort of fun but not all of them were australian a lot of them traveled specifically i think that's one thing that just blows me away about the payday community is like oh yeah i'll just go across the world to celebrate for a day um but the day my little brother was the photographer and he's a super like jockey sports dude um lovely an absolute love but all sports and, and jockey. And um, he came and the fans, first when I got there, a group of one fan came like as the delegate with a whole lot of art supplies for my kids in LA. Like he just turned up to one of the panels I was on and said, this is from all of us in the payday and Final Fantasy community that love you and we want to support your kids. And I just, you know, tears would like just waterworks. But then with 
Payday Con, everybody, like, we had a dance floor. I mean, Eric and Damien were there um, and they were dancing nonstop, as I'm sure many of you have seen the videos. Yeah. And <laughs> Great. the actual Payday fans, like, were so, my brother pulled me aside and he goes, I have never in my life seen a passionate group of people like this like so into something so excited about it so like positive and forward and like we're all celebrating and it's just i think the dichotomy of like i tried to explain to everybody, I was like you understand that these people when they're playing this game are trying to like kill murder maim like the things that they're actually doing in the game and then you see them and they couldn't be more like loving and passionate and he yeah, just was just like i don't know around. what this is yeah he was like i love these people so much i was like yeah see video game people are cool than sports people I'm just saying <laughs> but yeah that would have to be my favorite oh that and the swim um oh yeah when yeah, i did yeah. the swim i mean I never expected the payday community to get behind me the way they did. I've never felt such support and love. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, I swam uh, 24,000 meters, which is 15, a little over 15 miles, um, to raise money for my nonprofit, Arts Bridging the Gap. And Starbreeze agreed to do a match up to a certain amount. Um, and the payday fans, were honestly the ones that like, I think we got like 1,400 donations and a thousand of them came from people that I could identify like as payday fans. And it just, I mean, that kind of, you're like, I hadn't, I what? You guys are the best. I think we, I can say that everyone in this voice chat definitely got a mega Sydney mask. I definitely did. Yay! Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's still going on. We're trying to work out, Sujan and I, I don't know if you guys know Sujan, the community manager, but mm -hmm. um, he and I are trying to work out what to do because obviously Payday 2 is going to sort of become obsolete and we need to find a way to keep this going because everybody is still um, buying that mask. You know, there's probably at least 10 purchases a month still that come through and we get, you know, so for those that don't know, and by all means get in there, um, if you buy the mask for $10, that money goes straight to, or donate $10 to Arts Bridging the Gap, you get that mask. Um, we give you the code and um, it goes straight to Arts Bridging the Gap. So, you know, when new board members or new staff members come on board, they're like, what is this donation? What? No, it's like, let me explain the cool thing about life. Um, and they're like, so when did this start? I'm like, 2016. And they're like, it's still going. I'm like, yeah. Because people who love Payday 2 are awesome. Yeah, n not only to just voice something for a game, but to get in the community and, like, really enjoy your time i'm sure it's like just awesome it's like on a whole different level than just going in doing the lines leaving and then forgetting about it leap and i think that that's part of like how some people live you know some people open and not engage um for that i don't want to get super like psychoanalytical on folks but like it can be I think in life, it's why, like, I really understand, I think I understand the video game community. We all have our different levels of comfortability around connection, right? You know, some people, it's really like Discord is such an incredible forum for folks that need a different way to communicate than perhaps turning up and sitting in a room around a bunch of people and having a mixer or a networking night. Like, that word, mi mixer or networking, makes me, like, sweaty. Um <laughs> so uncomfortable and I and i think that there's a whole right i mean i'm an introvert right like the thought of having to put all of that energy after being you know out in the world all day i'm like i just want to crawl under the table but 
for folks who can do communication with a software in between and a, and a screen in between, and that enables them to be themselves. And that enables them to say what they really feel. Um, and I'm somebody that kind of lives in both worlds in that I've made it my life to connect with people on their level and, and learn and listen and just, I love humans so much. And for me, ironically, video game communities I really connect with because I also get exhausted by peopling. Like when I do too much peopling, I'm like, I need to just sit in a corner by myself and think about my behavior. But <laughs> being online and getting a message from someone feels really comfortable for me. So it's just been a joy to find a way that I can connect with a group of people that I never realized I understood as much as I did. And I was so busy embracing this personality that everyone told me I was. Like I've always got from everyone, you're like the most friendly outgoing, like you're such an extrovert and blah, 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 blah. People could say that. And I was always like, I don't know. I'm not sure. Why am I so just sad at the end of the day? And why am I so exhausted? And why are this? And going on this video game connection community journey made me realize that actually, no, I'm more like my video game buddies than I am my other people. And thank goodness to like embrace that identity. And now I know I need to like take quiet time. Otherwise people won't get the best version of Georgia. <laughs> yeah. You got to decompress somehow. What do you do in your oh free time gosh. besides voice acting and all the charity work and stuff? Like how do you, <laughs> rejuvenate <laughs> you're you're funny what is free time um i don't really have free time to be honest although i did sleep in this morning and that is That's a celebration good. um i know right it feels so luxurious um i've had a huge week with doing a mural um and we're not done yet and that i so one of the things we do at arts bridging the gap is paint murals and i'm the lead artist on this one and that means like 8 a.m. till 8 p.m. every day this week and then having to come home and like record voiceover auditions and stuff. So I needed that sleeping, gosh dang it. Um, but um, to answer your question, I actually don't really have free time. Free time is nothing that has ever resonated or identified itself in my life, unfortunately. Um, or fortunately, you know, like to answer that question in a way that it lands in me. What do I do for my happiness um, is work. Um, but not, I think, I'm sure a lot of people will resonate this with this. A lot of people do work and that is not their happy place. Um, I am passionate about creating artistic, like singing is a big part of my life. Um, acting is a big part of my life. Um, I want to host a children's TV show for middle school age students, um, creating little videos, connecting to kids, learning about how to make content or connect with young people that is meaningful. That is what refuels me. Um, I work out every day without fail. In fact, I'm going to have to leave in a few seconds, actually, to be able to get to the workout I need to do. But oh, no, um um, but like getting a workout in every day, making sure that I have something refueling that I read about that teaches me something. I'm a super big neuroscience geek, learning about something in the brain that helps me work with people in a more compassionate, understanding way is usually like a big win. And then singing and, and creating music and those are the things. But for me, that's work, ironically, but um, I'm so grateful it's my work. Ah, uh, yeah, just getting up every day and wanting to make a difference in the world. That's your fuel. And I, I, I get that. That's so awesome. Yeah, I'm a bit addicted to volunteering. It's a problem. <laughs> I understand. I don't know if there's a Volunteers Anonymous in the world. I don't think they've built that one yet. But I get it. You're, you're just addicted to smiles. I mean, I, I can't blame you. It's very true. I am a bit, I mean, literally like my favorite thing in the world is seeing a young person that's not smiling and then 
because of a moment either we have or that happens and I witness that they smile. I'm like, that's, that's my euphoria seeing that. Do you find that, uh, you want to spread happiness based off of just personal unhappiness yourself? Or do you just like, what's the, what's the root? Would you say? Yeah. Such, such an important question. Um, yes, it was based deeply on unhappiness. And I think that is something that is true of all things, right? Like as much as we want to believe we're all these selfless giving people that were born that way into the world of, I'm just a good person who does good things. We are human beings that act out of our own need. That is a core animal reality. We don't do something that we don't need something from even if it is the good feeling of doing something good for someone else. And I'm very aware that my journey started. I was um, unfortunately a very damaged, very hurt man um, who I don't know personally, you know, so to speak. Um, when I was two and a half, did some things to me that were very horrible and unforgiving and unforgivable, sorry. Although I do forgive him. So I shouldn't say they're unforgivable. I do forgive him, but I won't forget it ever. Um, did those things. And I kept it a secret for many, many, many years and just sort of decided literally at two and a half that I needed to make sure that every young person knew that they weren't responsible for bad things that happened to them because I created this narrative that it was my fault and I was a bad person. So I carried that. And then on the outside was busy trying to make sure no one else felt that way. And it took many, many, many years of being in the world, learning, seeing my sort of falls and trips and therapy and all that sort of stuff and, and really embracing the other humans in my world who had their own pains and their own challenges to get that this sadness and this pain is an okay thing to exist amongst my desire for happiness and my love of this, that, and the other, and also that anger that I got to channel through Sydney, because when someone does something like that to you, they do rob a part of your life in a way. Yes, it became the greatest gift because it enabled me to find my purpose, which was to connect with young people, to make them feel loved and have them know their value and worth and specialness. But it also takes away things because you immediately have like trust issues you immediately have body issues you have immediate deep like shame issues and that's mm -hmm. something that I now carry it's not something I'm ashamed of because it we all have it like I'm very clear that not one person in this world doesn't have something that's not super positive and that's mine oh, yeah definitely. and so right like I think it's funny that people pretend that they're all they don't they'll, they'll be like oh my god that person this and i'm like no, everyone so when you say that you something. mean you're not willing yeah exactly and, and i think it's really i'm like you have an amazing opportunity to connect with everybody on wait georgia talk for a second i think you cut out uh we might have lost Georgia for a second. That was the worst timing too. She was in such a passionate part. Hold on a second. Hold on, folks. I just messaged her. Oh, 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 there she is. oh, yeah. oh I can hear you. <laughs> if you said you anything for like the past, you know, the 18 seconds, we didn't hear it, but, uh, okay. what you well, were saying, sorry, <laughs> you gotta go. Um, well, truth is I've got to dash out, unfortunately. Um, I wasn't sure how long we were chatting for. Am I messing you up heaps if I disappear now? 
No, no, not at all. No, it's fine. Would you like to promote anything before uh, you head off? Oh, thank you. Well, everybody donate. How about that? Donate, donate, donate. These folks are playing video games for you to make the world better. Let them. Let them let you let them. Um, so, first of all, how about anybody that's listening right now, please, I, I implore you to do something that will make you feel better because you've helped other people today. As far as my own stuff goes, uh, you can check me out at Instagram, Georgia Van C. Um, I'm not really on Twitter slash X anymore because there's too much negativity in there, which is a pity because that's definitely where most of payday folks like to exist. So I'm sorry, but I just, I didn't like what I was seeing every time I logged in. Um, not from you guys, from <laughs> the, the rest of the world who like to talk about things that don't get us anywhere. Um, but um, Instagram, and if you're a young person who likes to hear other young people talk about their stuff, I have a podcast called Talking and Stuff. Um, talking and Stuff with George Vancey, it's just young people talking about their stuff. Um, so that's probably it, and I'm grateful for you asking. Yeah, thank you for coming, and I'm really glad we could give you that pedestal to talk about your story and such because more people need to hear things like that thank you yeah i agree i'm um i just think it's important that we all the more we talk about it the less it feels icky and i'm just so grateful exactly. that every time i get to un icky it a bit well do you have any closing remarks or anything else you want to say <laughs> um yes um Payday Take 2 community, thank you. And um, thank you to you guys for putting this on and trying, doing your own, you know, making your own difference in a way that resonates with you. I want you to know that I see you and recognize you because it takes a lot to put on something like this. I've done it myself a number of times and you are making a difference. You really are. So thank you. All right, well... You have a good rest of your day, and we, we thank you so much for stopping by. Yeah, you know. <laughs> it's my oh. absolute pleasure. And um, I, I almost want to be like, see you later, you wankers. Um, <laughs> if, if you give um, a good see closing Sydney line, I will donate $5. How about that? Okay, hey, perfect. But what do you want me to say? What's your favorite Sydney line? Do you have a favorite? Or am I putting you oh, in the I, mean, I don't care. Just say something dumb <laughs> or silly. Well, I can't help it. And this is the worst. And my partner's in the background right now. He's going to look over and be like, what the heck? <laughs> Who am I with? Um, but I have to say the worst line that I've ever said, if you don't go mind, to go from yeah. love and Far happiness. Away. But to finish finish this off, sit on my dick, cloaker. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. Be therapy. Feel better now. Bye, Georgia. Okay, lots of love to you all. Bye. Bye-bye.